Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to lecture 10 of uh, the lecture series Introduction to Interaction Design. In the last lecture, we had seen what role the emotions play when we design uh, interactive systems and how we understand these emotions and uh, what are behaviors of people, how are they important for the designers to integrate into the product or the system. In today's uh, lecture, we will learn a little bit about the uh, interfaces that what types of interfaces are available and what are some of their roles when it comes to interaction design. Now, digital interfaces can come in uh, several uh, forms, they can be a simple command line uh, interface and it could also be a very complex uh, graphical user interface. So, we have seen in one of the lectures earlier also that the command line interface uh, typically involves typing commands into the console, whereas the graphical user interfaces where we interact with the system with the help of menus, icons and uh, uh, through the windows. Now, digital interfaces are used in a wide uh, area of applications. So, mobile devices, web applications, uh, video games, digital media and many other uh, software related works. So, this uh, digital interface design is very critical to the user experience as it can uh, affect the usability aspect, the efficiency and the effectiveness of the device or the software application. So, there are many ways in which we can describe the different types of interfaces, but if we see we can broadly uh, club them into four uh, broad categories. So, depending on the function of the particular interface. So, for example, whether it is uh, intelligent, whether it is smart, adaptive. So, uh, based on function, we can club some of them together. The second is the interaction style. So, do we need a uh, command to communicate or graphics to communicate? So, what is that interaction style? The third is the input or the output. So, what kind of an input is required, whether it is a voice input or uh, you know uh, gesture input. Uh, and the lastly, the fourth is the platform which they are designed. So, whether they are designed for mobile, they are designed for tablet or are they a wearable uh, interface. So, uh, these four broad categories uh, we can divide them in. Now, the first graphical user interface uh, actually was um, we can say was formed through the first you know interface of the uh, Xerox star uh, which we can see on the screen the computer system on the right. Now, uh, this was a very um, although it was designed in the late 1970s and early 80s, but it was a very um, much a step ahead of what uh, people were used to earlier. So, it was a pioneering graphical user interface which was developed by the Xerox Corporation uh, Palo Alto Research Center. And uh, how and why it was important was because it had some of those interactive features that we uh, use currently like drop down menus, it had uh, uh, pi, uh, point and click interactions, it had icons and uh, it had overlapping uh, windows, the cut, copy, paste function could be used and also it was connected on the ethernet. So, uh, so we can see that how it was an inspiration for the current uh, GUIs that we have and that we uh, are using. So, the graphical user uh, interfaces they typically use uh, icons, windows, uh, menus and buttons uh, which allow the user to interact with the digital uh, device or the software. 
and this graphical user uh, interface is designed to make it easy for users to navigate through the uh, complex uh, systems and complete the task. And uh, in this particular uh, way of functioning, the exact uh, command is not required to be known by the user, but uh, the, the command works in the background and it uh, need not be uh, uh, you know an input from the user's end. Now, some of the key components uh, that I have already mentioned uh, that are there in the GUI, they are icons. So, they are graphical representations like we have for file or folder or uh, uh, bin, recycle bin. Then we have windows. So, these are uh, graphical containers that uh, hold the user interface elements where in that window we can identify these icons or menus or buttons. Then the third is our menu. So, which is basically a list of options that uh, you know uh, that uh, is displayed when the user clicks on the menu. So, these menus can have uh, even uh, menus uh, uh, lower in the hierarchy underneath the main menu and the buttons. So, these are also elements that the user can click and some action can be taken. So, the original uh, GUI uh, was called uh, uh, WIMP, W I M P, which stands for Windows Icons, Menus and uh, Pointers. So, it was basically a primarily a box, uh, boxy design and uh, the user interaction took place through the combination of windows, uh, scroll bars. Uh, check boxes, palettes, panels and dialog boxes that appeared on the screen in uh, various forms and developers were constrained by the widgets. So, basically the, the number of control buttons that were there. So, those were the limiting factors of the original uh, GUI and now over time it has become more user friendly. Now, uh, the command line interface although it is probably used only by say software developers or um, you know uh, people who are coding, but not so much by designers, but, but still uh, command line interface still has some advantages over the GUIs. So, uh, it provides users with direct access to the underlying operating system and its functionalities. And for designers, sometimes it is not really required to uh, be in touch with the underlying uh, operating uh, systems, but this allows them to perform a wide range of tasks quickly. So, it is a very fast way of uh, the input and output mechanism. Now, some of the advantages that command line uh, uh, interaction has is speed. So, it is a very quick way of communicating with the computer as opposed to uh, say the GUI, which could be a little bit more time taking. The second is the uh, automation. So, CLI commands can be automated and scripted, which allows the user to perform batch operations. So, we had also looked at the batch operations in one of the previous lectures, where how the communication is uh, done in a batch and then the output is received and how there is no interaction really between the user and the system. And uh, CLI is also uh, useful uh, when we are giving a batch uh, uh, operation because it helps in automating the repetitive tasks. So, we do not have to repeat it again and again. So, it does it uh, quite easily. And lastly, uh, flexibility. So, the command line uh, interface they are highly uh, flexible and they allow users to customize and uh, tailor their workflows to meet uh, their particular needs. So, a uh, command line interface you may uh, recognize uh, uh, this from the computer. Sometimes uh, we still use the quick command line uh, you know interaction is conducted with the system. Now, they were uh, superseded by the graphical user interfaces, which incorporated we saw some commands like menus icons and uh, keyboard shortcuts and pop ups text commands. Now, command line interfaces uh, uh, you know continue to have an advantage 
where the user finds them uh, easy <coughs> and faster to use as compared to the menu based uh, system. So, there are um, depending on what function we are performing. So, command line interfaces actually are sometimes are more efficient as compared to the uh, other systems. And specifically when we are working on some softwares like AutoCAD or Rhino, where the command line uh, input actually gives us a quicker response. Now, the next in type of interface is the menu driven user interface. Now, you may recognize uh, the image from that of uh, an ATM. So, uh, generally the menu based use user interface has a set of menus which is organized in a hierarchy. So, the menu after choosing the, the highest most uh, a menu then there will be several other options underneath and then maybe underneath there will be another layer of menus. So, the advantage of the menu driven user interface is that they are easy to use because they are intuitive. You do not have to make a lot of choice or you do not have to fill a lot of options, but you have to select one option at a time. So, it makes it uh, easy to use. The menus are generally organized very uh, uh, cleanly, very, uh, very well. So, you can easily identify which function or where we want to uh, enter and there is always a way to cancel and get out of that particular uh, step and go back to the original step. So, it is very uh, clearly organized and easy and functional to use. The third is that the uh, errors are reduced because we are just attempting one step at a time. So, even if something uh, wrong is entered, we can always re uh, retrace our steps, but the chances of error here are reduced because of the user friendly organization of the uh, menu. So, we can see that how these are applicable when especially we want a very quick a response like when a tourist is looking for some information in a new town. So, if they want to know that what can they do in the evening, so what are the options available? Cinemas, theatres, museums. So, they can uh, select the option they want and then probably they will be uh, you know provided with a list or area wise distribution in which area they are. So, then these menus can be you know they can have sub menus and then another menu underneath that layer. The, uh, the next interface is touch user interface. So, in a touch screen interface which has become really common nowadays we all use uh, mostly uh, the, the cell phones we are using nowadays have a touch screen and even other devices like laptops or uh, tablets that we use they also have touch screen. So, they uh, allow the user to interact with them by tapping, by uh, uh, swiping, pinching. <coughs> so, this, uh, this has made the uh, interaction very easy, where earlier if uh, you have seen that phone, the one with buttons. So, in order to uh, reach somewhere or to find somebody's name in the address book, one had to go through that uh, arrow uh, button and click several times to actually reach the person whom we are you know trying to uh, call or message. But now through a touch screen it is very easy to just swipe and uh, identify the ad in the name in the address book. Now, some uh, advantages of the touch screen interface uh, it is that they are intuitive. So, they are easy to use and if somebody is already familiar with how the touch screen uh, interface works then for them it is very easy. Then they are uh, efficient, so they, they are fast, they are quick. We can find the right uh, name or uh, the right uh, application very quickly as opposed to other uh, uh, older methods. Also versatile because we can use them in many different uh, areas for uh, uh, mobile devices, in industrial applications, hospitals, in a lot of uh, areas they have application. Uh, at the same time, they also have some limitations. So, uh, limited feedback. So, uh, touch screens, uh, they provide limited feedback. So, sometimes the user is not able to ensure whether the 
input has been given or not and sometimes they may keep on tapping tapping on the screen and that may lead to uh, you know them logging out of the system especially if we are you know interacting with an online banking platform or making a payment it can also block our card at times for 24 hours. So, the user does not know that whether the information has been sent because there is no uh, feedback as such. When we are pressing a physical button on the phone, so we know that it has been pressed, but uh, in the uh, in this particular uh, interface it is difficult to say. Then the uh, visibility is a uh, problem especially when it is very sunny or we are using it uh, outside because in, in that particular condition we cannot really read it very well. And the lastly is hygiene especially when it is a shared uh, screen where lot of people like we saw how tourist kiosks or in hospitals people are using it then hygiene can be an issue because multiple people using it uh, how clean is it uh, who is cleaning it all those questions become uh, important. Now voice uh, user uh, interfaces. So, users here can interact with the device or application by speaking commands or questions which are processed and uh, interpreted by a speech recognition system and the system then generates a response which may be spoken aloud by the device or it may be uh, typed across the screen. Now, so they are very common uh, we can see very commonly that voice assistants are there we have uh, Siri, uh, we have Google, a lot of these platforms have these voice uh, assistants, uh, Alexa and all of these and uh, even in uh, automated customer service systems, we see uh, these the application of the voice user interface. Now, some advantages are that of course, they are a hands free operation. So, you do not need to uh, type anything, especially for elderly people who may have motor functions which are limited. So, especially in their case also and, and uh, others as well, it saves time because now you are just giving the input through your voice. So, you the, the whole process of pressing the buttons and typing is eliminated, making mistakes while typing is eliminated. Uh, then accessibility, so they are uh, accessibility uh, like I mentioned in case of elderly, but also uh, any other uh, sort of impairment. Uh, the voice command uh, makes it very uh, more uh, much more accessible as compared to the traditional uh, method of inputting and uh, natural language processing. So, so they can use NLP the natural uh, language uh, processing and uh, so this uh, helps in interpreting the user commands and questions and the, uh, the uh, communication. Uh, becomes very very uh, natural. So, uh, this is also being integrated with it. So, the interaction becomes more uh, real more human like. There are also some disadvantages of this. So, one is the limited functionality. Now, they uh, these may be less uh, versatile than the other types of uh, interfaces uh, especially for uh, complex uh, tasks or interactions that require visual feedback or detailed uh, inputs. So, that is one disadvantage. The other, other is the privacy concern that uh, we nowadays we see around us that uh, a lot of data leakage uh, happens, a uh, lot of people are concerned about how the information is uh, going out, how is uh, you know we talk about something one fine day and then we see an advertisement on some retail platform. So, the privacy concern becomes important here that uh, uh, is something recording is the phone or any other device that we are using is it recording our conversation or when we are mentioning our personal information is it uh, uh, noting it down somewhere. And lastly the accuracy that uh, this particular interaction may be uh, less accurate than the other types of uh, interfaces and especially uh, when we are in a uh, situation uh, like in our house, but maybe some uh, procession is going in our neighborhood or some wedding is going on in your neighborhood. Then in that case the um, accuracy will be uh, decreased and also if somebody 
is uh, having some kind of a speech impairment in that case also uh, this will probably not be the most effective uh, way out. Now, next we come to the uh, form based interface. So, the form based user interface is a digital interface that presents users with a structured form or set of fields where they have to input data or information. And uh, the form based interfaces are generally used in web applications in mobile apps and other software systems which uh, uh, require the users to input data or information. So, here we can see uh, some of the uh, forms, uh, some examples of the forms. Uh, now, they, uh, here the users are presented with some fields, labels, instructions and they are uh, prompted to input data. Now, they can, they can include a variety of input types like text fields, they could be drop down menus, uh, they could be some check boxes. So, there are various ways in which the form uh, based uh, interface interacts with the user. So, these can be depending on how they are created or how much thought has been put into it, they can be very easy for one to fill out and uh, one could uh, fill it out uh, very efficiently. But if it is not uh, designed well, then it can also uh, give certain, uh, can pose some problems uh, for the users. So, for example, if may just give an error, but the user may not be able to figure out, uh, this happens many times that uh, the user is unable to figure out that what is he entering wrong. Sometimes uh, they will not allow a number, but the error will not reflect that what was entered wrong. So, so these are very uh, effective ways of uh, getting the input of the user, but they have to be designed well in order to get the correct information and to minimize any type of frustration that user may uh, feel while using them. So, uh, some advantages are consistency. So, they are consistent, predictable. So, we know that uh, especially when there is a star, it is a mandatory field etcetera. And uh, uh, so, for example, nationality then we expect a drop down and then we can choose the country. So, it is quite predictable and uh, some of the functions or some of the areas that need to be filled are very objective. So, it makes it very quick process to fill it up. Then the next is the accuracy. So, they help to ensure data accuracy by prompting users to input information in a consistent and structured way. So, uh, there will be a hierarchy that will be followed and uh, so it makes it very easy for the user to access it. And then customizability. So, they can be customized to collect specific types of information or to meet the needs of uh, different user groups. Now, some disadvantages uh, of form based uh, UIs are that user experience. So, they can be less engaging because they are very uh, pragmatic way of filling the information. So, they are just uh, uh, one after the other options. So, they can be less uh, visually appealing than some other types of data collection uh, or interfaces that are available. And especially like I gave a few examples, if they are, they are poorly designed, then uh, the user experience uh, uh, gets even worse. Then next is the limited flexibility. So, they may be less uh, flexibility uh, uh, in terms of uh, how the user is interacting with them as compared to some other types of interfaces that are available. So, some uh, complex uh, tasks or interactions that require more open ended input, uh, the user may not be allowed to enter uh, those. So, they may have to select only from the given options, but the user may not be able to enter something uh, from their end. So, that uh, limits the flexibility and the, uh, the information that the user can share with this. And lastly, the cognitive load. So, sometimes uh, these uh, form based UIs can increase the cognitive load on the user because of the way uh, that they are 
uh, presented if they are not organized properly or sometimes they uh, require large number of fields for the user to fill. So, that can increase the cognitive load and the user may actually get uh, uh, you know may just leave the uh, whole process in between. So, uh, becomes very important that how we design uh, these particular systems although they are very effective way of gathering uh, the uh, information that is required and can be a very positive experience if some thought is uh, added into it. Now, virtual reality interface are, is a very interesting type of interface wherein generally uh, a headset is worn uh, by the uh, user and uh, which, which kind of tracks their head movements and displays a 3D virtual environment. Uh, and this uh, the user responds to this in the real time. So, they actually feel that they are in that virtual environment at that minute. So, so this VR uh, interfaces we see that they are very commonly used in uh, gaming, in uh, training uh, these uh, um, aircraft uh, training simulators. So, lot of applications are there and uh, so they sort of give that immersive experience to the user where they actually respond to the stimulus that they are being given in the way that a person would actually respond to if they were in the real uh, situation out there. So, the user can um, interact with handheld controllers uh, once they are wearing the headset and they are in that virtual space they can control with the uh, handsets. Uh, they can control uh, their movements and other things as designed by the interface. Then there are motion sensors also or there can be some other input devices as well. So, we can see that uh, the virtual reality has uh, several uh, uh, applications. Now, advantages of uh, virtual reality interfaces uh, include immersion. So, we saw that how the uh, user can feel a high level of immersion and can feel like they are in truly in that area in that real uh, environment. Then the interactivity, so the VR interfaces allow for high level of uh, interactivity and uh, can support a wide range of uh, interactions. So, uh, ranging from simple gestures to complex movements and interactions. And uh, third is the engagement. So, VR interfaces can be highly engaging and can help to create a sense of uh, presence and uh, uh, excitement that is difficult to achieve with other types of interfaces. Now, some uh, disadvantages uh, can be that it is uh, uh, you know costly the VR experience or the uh, virtual uh, reality user interface is uh, expensive. So, the equipment is expensive especially for high end systems that require powerful uh, computers and specialized equipment. Then it is complex. So, uh, they can be complex to set up and use and especially for users who are not familiar with the VR technology and safety concerns. Uh, because like we saw that it is a very highly immersive uh, interface. So, the user may not be aware of what is going on around them in the real situation. So, uh, it could lead to some potential uh, hazardous situation. So, that is something uh, one need to uh, take care. But however, overall uh, VR interfaces are very powerful and exciting and uh, they can create new opportunities in the area of gaming, in the area of simulations and uh, training and other applications. Some other type of uh, applications of uh, other interfaces, uh, we can see multimedia, uh, shareable interfaces, shareable interfaces are also a very interesting area of study because it has been found that when people interact uh, on a shareable device, so they learn better and they also get to see uh, the response of the other person uh, quickly. 
So, for example, Figma is one such uh, shareable software where several people can work on the same file at the same time. We will see some uh, uh, examples from Figma also in the upcoming lectures. And then we have wearables, uh, robots and drones and augmented reality. So, all of these other types of interfaces uh, are uh, also here. So, uh, this uh, brings us to the end of uh, today's uh, lecture and uh, I will see you in the uh, next lecture. Thank you.